tell me your name? Bob Kraft. And you, uh, you're an attorney. I, I practiced for years. I'm not, I'm not practicing anymore, but for many years I represented kids that were in foster care uh, on a pro bono basis here in Jackson County. Right. And so you, you, you know the, the issues that I do that surround. What, um, um, what were the major, what are some of the, the things that face kids that age out of foster care? Well, I think the, the two things. Number one, when they age out of foster care uh, at 18, they're, they're gone. They're on, they're on their own, and they, basically speaking, don't have any direction or um, resources in which to be helped. But I think more than that, is that people have to realize why they got into foster care in the first place, the source of the problem, why they placed into foster care. And if they were placed into foster care at, at say, 11 or 12 or 13 years old for hypothetically uh, uh, physical abuse or sexual abuse or something, it's a very traumatic event. And so they're placed into that situation being removed from their biological parents at that age and placed into a situation that of, with one definition, uncertainty. And they never know what's going to happen. So they wait and they hope and they think, maybe I can get adopted. Maybe I can uh, get some permanency in my life. But those that don't, those that turn 18, some states now 21, but 18, um, they're on their own. And that's that. What inspired you to, to get involved? <laughs> that's a long story. But uh, I was practicing law years ago, and um, the um, we call it the juvenile court here in Jackson County, Michigan, said, would you like to do some gratis work, some pro bono work, um, on the side and represent kids that are in foster care or going to be in foster care and defend their rights. And I said, sure. So I did that for approximately 15 years. Um, and it was extremely rewarding. The, the, from emancipations to situations where parental rights were terminated and the, it, the, the child, the minor, went into foster care for a long period of time, um, it was difficult but rewarding. What, what rights need to be defended? Simple, simple answer. The rights of the minor. The rights of the, I'm, I'm not going to say the minor, it sounds too clinical, but the rights of the child that is in foster care. Because sometimes they're in a situation where there's a real possibility that it may be adopted. You mentioned tonight that there's two sides to the story. Foster parents, foster families that are in the, in the uh, business of fostering, in the business of fostering for, in the business of fostering for um, money, because they do get paid by various states, or the, in the business of fostering for love. And if, in fact, they're in the business of fostering for love, there's a possibility that that child may get adopted. But I would, I would tell you that my experience says that after 10, 11, or 12 years old, it's very difficult to be adopted on a permanent basis um, for any child that's in foster care. And, right. and that is the gray area after the fact. Right. 10, 11, 12, what do you do between 12 and 18? And there's no permanency. And then at 18, the state says you are no longer a ward of the court. You're on your own. Right, right. Um, maybe to hone it in a little bit, what what specific rights do you do you see under assault? What specific rights? How about not? I, I wouldn't call it rights, but benefits and privileges under assault the, the perhaps the right the right to thrive the right to succeed the right to the, have the ability to succeed I see that under assault and it's 
if you at 18 are just left on your own without any assistance because the state says now you're an adult, legal adult, and on your own, that is the gap because you can prepare as much as you want for a 16-year-old, a 17-year-old, and coming up to an 18-year-old, you can prepare for them to be adults, but guess what? You, me, you weren't ready, no matter how much we were prepared, even in a great family. Yeah. You're not prepared to be an adult at 18 and to be left out alone with no resources available is tough, and that's a true gap. You have a 17-year-old and a 17-year-old and a 14-year-old. 14-year-old yes. daughters. Yes. And as a father, knowing what you provide for them as a father and as a guide, um, I guess it must heighten your, your passion for... I don't question about that. Because I know that it, my commitment is there forever. I mean, it's never going to stop, period. Yeah. Um, with with some foster situations, it stops at 18. Yeah. And it, you can't cut that umbilical cord at 18 just because they've had a birthday. So it's so incredibly difficult to see this uh, this flat line, this, this 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 stone wall go up and say, 17, we're caring for you. 18, you're on your own. And I don't care how much preparing you do. I prepared my own daughters for that. Uh, but I'll still be there. Yeah. And that doesn't happen yeah. with lots of foster kids. The figure that I talked about earlier, the 26 year you know, kids in yes. America being financially independent at 26, that's the average age. Yeah. yeah. And then we ask these kids to, to be independent at 18. Right. Well... I consider myself pretty successful right now, and I'm sure you do too. Were you ready to be financially independent at 18? No. No. Absolutely not. No. At 18, I, I wanted all the freedoms, but none of the financial independence. Yeah. And I think that would be normal with any 18-year-old. So, yeah. no. Yeah. I, what I'm finding with these kids uh, are that they're very strong. They're very strong because they've had to be. And that's not a bad thing. Uh, I think I'm going to disagree with you a little bit there. I think they're strong out of, out of necessity. I think they feel they have no option other than to be strong. And I think if you, if you um, had an opportunity to talk to them at length, not saying you individually, but an opportunity to talk to them at length, you'd find that they don't want to be strong. They want to be loved. They want to be watched over. Not every day, not every minute of the day, but they want to be watched over. Like you and I, we just want to be loved and cared for no matter what. No matter what, even if you're independent. So, I don't see that. Have you, have you seen a, a specific case where a kid was turned around by someone caring? Yes, I have seen that, and um, in a unique situation, um, they were in foster care for many, many years. I think about ten years they were in foster care, and during that time, they, the foster parents, credit given, affiliated the um, boy with the Big Brothers Big Sisters organization. And after, and, and so this minor had a big brother, big brother, little brother, and they did stuff together and so forth and so on. But anyway, at 18, when technically even the big brother is supposed to stop, this big brother continued and mentored um, the, quote, little brother um, and continues to this day. I've actually talked to them uh, two weeks ago. So one person can make a difference. One person can make a difference. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, that was you? Yeah, yeah. I still talk to him wow. all the time. That's great. Who made a difference for you? Who made a difference for me? Mm -hmm. 
Um, oh, you're going to get me tough here. My dad. Uh, he died uh, February 18th last year. Uh, tragically hit by a car. Oh. And unexpected. But uh, he was... He was the rock. He was the dude. And um, loved my mother too. She's still, obviously, I talk to her almost every day. But uh, yeah, he, he made a difference for me. He taught me how to be, I don't want to say how to be a man, but how to be a human being. And I think there's a huge difference. Um, he, he was a good dude. Choked up, yeah. yeah. Like your songs tonight. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear about your dad. It's uh, yeah, it was tough. Yeah, yeah. He just, uh, yeah, I was just hit by a, hit by a car while he was as a pedestrian. Wow, it was tough. Hmm. I'm very sorry. He was a very strong guy. He was a very good guy. <laughs> Not to get uh, to digress, but the type of person that any child in foster care would benefit from. Just a strong, confident personality that said, be your own person, treat everyone nice. I walked into uh, a convenience store two days after my father died, and I went up and I bought a Sunday paper, and uh, it the headlines were that my father, Robert Kraft, killed. And there were the headlines in the paper, so I bought six or seven of them. And the lady at the convenience store said to me, why are you buying so many? And I said, because that was my father. And she just broke down and cried. And she said, he came in here every morning at about 6 a.m., and he honked the horn. <laughs> and I knew that I would bring out a paper and a coffee for, not him, but for my mom. And he would take that coffee and that newspaper and drive it home to my mother every morning. And the... Uh, In fact, he had other people, including myself, was so strong and not dig digressing, but that's the type of thing that I think kids that... Uh, um, permanency. Yeah, the permanency. The permanency and the... Reliability. Thank you so much, because I'm choked up right now. But, uh, yeah, that stuff, they miss, and yeah. they won't have. Uh, if they're just opt out at 18. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Bob. I appreciate it. Thank what you, would you kid. say, if you could say something directly to, to foster kids, what would you, what would you say? Uh, well, that's easy. I would say that you are good people. You, I'll look in the camera this time, not yeah. you. You're good people. You have a future. You never know what can happen. Strive for the best. Um, Blink. It's a great book of book that uh, I've read, and it means that you can, in a split second, change your life for good or for bad. Uh -huh. And if you make the right decisions, don't worry about what can happen. Worry about the moment, and you will succeed. Yeah.